Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome back to Camino Kids Cove Corner. I hope you had a fantastic week this week. Um, I know this weekend we had a lot of good weather, so hopefully you got to go and run around outside a little bit. And I know I did, and it was really nice, and it was a lot of fun. We're gonna get started right away and pick our pizza prize dinner winner. Last week we had our very first pizza prize dinner winner. This week, let's see who it's going to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the name. And it is Lila, Lila Selk. Great job memorizing your verse, Lila. Um, I will contact your mom to get your pizza prize dinner to you. Great job memorizing the verse and great job for all of the participants who memorized their verse and submitted the video to me. You guys are doing a great job memorizing verses. I'm so proud of you. So let's review our memory verse again. This week, we're gonna use the same memory verse. So those of you who have memorized the memory verse from last week, but didn't send me a video, now is your chance. We're gonna go ahead and memorize the same memory verse as last week to give um, you guys a little bit more opportunity to practice and memorize this verse. So we'll say it together one time. Repeat after me or follow along with me as I read it. John 10, nine. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and go in and out and find pasture. So I want you guys to work on that memory verse this week. And when you're working on memorizing, also think about the words. Think about how can these words apply to my life? How does this verse apply to me? Get those verses, get this verse memorized and go ahead and submit that video to me and you too can win a pizza prize dinner. So let's get started with our lesson. Um, last week, we learned about how God knows our hearts. And there was two people that we talked about. They were Cain and Abel. We have Cain and we have Abel here. Now, what did, what did they do for a living? That's right, we have Cain who was a tiller of the land or we said he was a farmer and Abel who was a shepherd. So he took care of sheep. And we talked about how um, they both brought offerings to God, um, but God had respect for one of their offerings and he did not have respect or regards for the other. Whose did he have regards for? That's right. God had regards for Abel's offering, but he did not have regard or respect for Cain's offering. And that was because God knows our hearts and he knew that Abel obeyed God by faith and he knew that Cain's works were evil. So we said that we all have these feelings that we feel on the outside um, and sometimes we feel something different on the inside and God knows this and he knows um, what our hearts really feel, what's really on the inside. And that's pretty amazing that God knows what's in our hearts. And we learned a, a new word last week and we said that he knows what's in our hearts because he is omniscient, which means all knowing that he knows everything and we can't hide anything from God. So that was a review from last week. So we're going to go ahead and get started our lesson this week. So moving on to this week's lesson, we are going to think about what is in our hearts. Now, a lot of people might think that there's only good things in our hearts, but we're going to think about, we're going to learn about what the Bible really says about what is in our hearts. And we're going to investigate a little bit more into our Bibles today. So if you have your Bible, go ahead and turn to Romans 3.23. Um, I have my Bible here. I'm going to be following along, or you guys follow along with me. Uh, if you don't have a Bible and you would like one, can you just send us a message and we would love to give a Bible to you. We want to make sure that you have a Bible to follow along with. So if you if you don't have a Bible, have your mom or dad's message us and we'll get one to you so that way you can follow along with us. But let's start off in Romans 3:23 and see what the see what the Bible has to say about our about us and about our hearts. Romans 3:23 says, "For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. So according to this verse, Romans 3, 23, the Bible says, who has sinned? That's right. The Bible says that we have all sinned. Um, so it's not just maybe your 
your the mean kid in class that does sin or maybe your brother when he annoys you that does sin the bible says that we have all sinned i have sinned and you have sinned and everyone has sinned and because of that sin we fall short of the glory of god now let's let's pause there for a second and let's think about what we talked about sin was now sin if you remember from last week we gave a real easy definition that sin is anything you do you say or think that displeases God. So sin could be as simple as disobeying our mom and dad because that displeases God, or maybe um, hitting our brother and sister because that displeases God. So sin can be a lot of different things. And the Bible says that because of that sin, we all fall short of God. And not only because of that sin, we all fall short of God, um, but that we <clears throat> we shall f we fall short of his glory. Now, if we remember a couple weeks ago, we learned about where sin began, when what 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 started sin, and that was when when Adam and Eve decided to disobey God. They um, brought sin into this world, and through that, we have all sinned. We all choose to disobey, just like Adam and Eve chose to disobey. Let's look and see what the Bible has to say about sin in the New Testament. So Romans is in the Old Testament. It's in the second half of the Bible. Jeremiah 3, um, 17, 9 in the New Testament also tells us about sin. Or about our, our hearts, actually. Jeremiah 17, 9. It says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? So what does this verse say about our hearts? Yeah, it's it's deceitful. It's tricky. It wants to trick us sometimes. And not only that, it's sick. The Bible says the heart is sick. And who can who can know it? Who can understand it? So this is kind of it's kind of bad news, isn't it? We all have sin in our hearts and we all choose to sin. And we our hearts are evil. Our hearts are desperately wicked, the Bible says. So I have we're gonna go ahead and uh, look to our flip chart here we have the bad news is that we've all sinned and get this um chart that i have here i'll use this one that i have in my hand this one's a little bit better bible says that the bad news we talked about the bad news is that we've all sinned that we all choose to disobey god and you notice the boys and girls on there they're kind of sad and the serpent what do you what do you think the serpent reminds us of i have you can't if you can't see it i have one right here what does this serpent remind us of yeah, it reminds us of the serpent that was in the, in the garden, of the snake that was in the garden that deceived Eve and um, and deceived her so that she ate of the fruit. And we see here that the boys and girls are sad. And they're sad because, maybe they're sad because they're sad when they disobey God. That they, they don't want to disobey God, but they do anyways. Um, that could be a reason why they're sad. Now, the Bible says that we all sin, we all disobey God. And we all have sin in our hearts. So we all have sin in our hearts. I have some more um, charts for us here. The Bible says we all have sin in our hearts. Now, because of that sin, we all choose to be, we all deserve to be separated from God forever. But how do we get rid of the sin in our hearts? Let's, let's try to think of maybe ways that we can get rid of the sin that's in our heart. So I have here... 10, maybe if I do 10 good things a day, maybe that'll get rid of the sin in my heart. Do you think that that can get rid of the sin? That we can maybe earn our way into heaven to get rid of the sin in our hearts? Because remember, because we have that sin, that sin separates us from us from God, that we cannot be in heaven with God with the sin in our hearts. So maybe if we say nice things to our friends or our brothers and sisters, um, maybe if we, do the, if we do that, that'll help get rid of the sin in our hearts. What about if we do a lot of chores? That's a good thing that we can do. Doing chores is, is good. Saying nice things to our friends and brothers and sisters are a good thing that we can do. What about, I know, we go to church every day. Let's say you watch every single video that is put up about church. Now, going to church every Sunday and being nice to our brothers and sisters, saying nice things and doing lots of chores are things that are good to do. These are things we should do, that we should be nice and help mom and dad with our chores but and go to church and watch all the videos. But these won't take away the sin from our life. These won't, these won't clean our hearts that are wicked. 
The Bible says that there is one way to take away our sins. Who is this? Easter was just a couple weeks ago. We talked about this. Does anyone remember who is this? That's right. This is Jesus. Jesus came. He died on the cross to take away our sins, to clean and purify our hearts. And only Jesus can take away our sin. Let's um, turn in our Bibles to John 3, 16. John 3, verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. So the Bible says that God loved our world so much, or God loves you so much, that he gave a very special and a very precious gift to our world, his son, Jesus Christ. And we talked about this on Easter, um, how God came and he was died, he was buried, and he rose again on the third day um, for our sins. And when Jesus died on the cross for our sins, he did that because he just loved us so much that he knew that there was no way that we could earn our way to heaven. There was no way that we could do enough chores or say enough nice things or be obedient enough to earn our way to heaven. And Jesus knew that he was the only way and God knew that Jesus would be the only way to heaven. And so he made a way for us to have eternal life to be with, with Jesus forever. And that is good news, isn't it? Yeah. You know, we talked about some really bad news earlier. That our hearts are wicked and they're desperately evil. But the good news is that God loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us so that we can be with him forever. Now, God not only, he not only wanted to be with us forever, but God cares about you. God cares about the things that you care about. God is good news, isn't it? That is great news that not only did God die on the cross for us, but God loves us and he knows us so much and he wants um, to have a, a relationship with us. He wants to to spend time with us every day and God knows all these things are in our hearts and what good news and what good news that is for us. Thank you boys and girls for listening to today's lesson. We have a um, an, a special guest for our Justin and Jesse story time. And I know you're going to be really excited to see who our special guest is for this week. So go ahead and tune in and listen really closely to our Justin and Jesse story time. Good morning, boys and girls. Today we're going to read a story called Covering Up the Smudge. Me paint, me paint. Ellie ran from Jesse to Justin, begging to help them paint the pictures, but Jesse and Justin were both very busy, and they didn't want to give up their paintbrushes. No, Ellie said Justin, not right now. We're almost finished. Then you can paint. Ellie burst into tears, and she ran from the family room to go find her mom. Justin shook his head. Poor Ellie, he said. She gets so mad when she can't do what I want to do. And the kids went back to their paintings. I've got red flowers in my picture. See? J Jessie held up her paper so Justin could see her masterpiece. Yeah, I've got green trees and a blue T-Rex on mine, he said. Suddenly, they heard Justin's mom calling from the kitchen. Justin, would you please come here? Uh-oh, Justin said. Ellie must have tattled on us. They put their picture down on the table and they went to the kitchen. What's wrong, Mom? Justin asked. Ellie's upset about not being able to paint. Is there a problem? No, it's just that Jesse and I were both really busy painting our pictures and we were using the paintbrushes, so I told Ellie she had to wait until I was done, he explained. I see. Well, thank you, she said. Why don't you guys go wash up for lunch? Okay, they said, and they ran to the bathroom and they were washing their hands. Blue, green, black, and red paint all went swirling down the drain. They sat down and they ate their sandwiches. Mm, strawberry jam's one of my favorites, said Jesse. Me too, he said. The two giggled as they ate their lunch. Their mom went to do the laundry, and Ellie wasn't hungry. So she wandered to the, off to the other room. After a while, Justin and Jesse suddenly heard their mom saying, Oh, no, Ellie, no, 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 don't do that. Jesse and Justin both jumped, down, both jumped up from the table, and they ran to the family room to see Ellie with a paintbrush in each hand, spraying red and green paint all over the family room wall. I paint, announced Ellie. Very proudly, Justin and Jesse gasped at the huge blodge, blodge, 
blob, excuse me, a red and green paint that mixed together into one yucky smudge on the cream yellow wall. Justin, you kissed it and put away your paints, their mom said. We're sorry, mom, he said. We came as soon as you called us, and then we were eating lunch. Yes, I know, their mom replied. Well, I guess we'll have to try to clean this off. Do you want us to help you? asked Jesse. That would be great. Thank you. First, they used soapy water, but they could still see the smudge. Next, Justin's mom sprayed on some cleaner, and they all scrubbed with sponges. Oh, that looks worse now. Justin stepped back. Well, I've got one more thing to try, said Justin's mom. She found a bottle of some kind of soapy stuff and spread it on the wall. They scrubbed again, but this time, even the creamy yellow paint was starting to come off. Oh dear, this won't work. I'm afraid I'll need to cover it up completely, asked Je said Justin's mom. You mean with a piece of paper or something? Asked Justin. No, it's... No, it will have to be painted over completely. That's the only thing that will cover the stain, but I do have some paint in the garage. Justin's mom found the paint and went to work on the smudgy wall. She had to paint over the greenish-red blotch three times. Finally, the stain was gone. It was all covered over. All gone, said, El said Ellie, as she watched from her little chair. Yes, it's gone. You don't paint here anymore, said Mom. Only here. She showed Ellie a piece of paper she laid on the table. Ellie nodded and started painting again. Wow, that was wrong of Ellie to paint on that wall, wasn't it? Asked Jessie. Yes, but she's still pretty young and doesn't always understand what's right and wrong. What's really bad is when we get older and we keep doing things that we know are wrong. You mean like sin, asked Justin. Yeah, that's right, their mom replied. Actually, sin is kind of like that icky smudge in the wall. Huh? What do you mean, asked Jessie. Well, we tried and tried to clean it off, right? But we couldn't do it, could we? No, we even made it worse, said Justin. Yes, Jessie agreed. The more we scrubbed, the worse it looked. And sin is just like that, their mom explained. There's just no way we can fix it ourselves. We can't get rid of sin on our own. But Jesus, but Jesus can help, right? Asked Justin. That's exactly right, their mom replied. Just like the only thing that would take care of a smudge problem was to cover it up with paint. So Jesus paints our sins? Jesse asked, a little confused. Well, he doesn't use paint. Jesus used his blood when he died on the cross to cover our sins. He took the punishment for sin when he died. And when we believe in him, it's like his blood covers all of our sins and makes our hearts clean again. Like the wall, said Justin. Yes, when you ask Jesus to forgive your sins and you trust in him, he will make your heart clean and new. Justin Small picked up Ellie and turned to look over the, and turned to look over at the painting job she had done. Justin and Jesse stood beside her. The wall looked really nice, so bright and clean now, that the smudge was gone. Uh, what's going on here? Justin's dad walked in. He saw all four of them just standing there, looking at the wall. <laughs> oh, hello, dear. Mom said, Daddy, we paint, said Ellie. Huh, said Dad. That's right, Mom explained with a wink. We all decided to paint today. The end. Thank you, boys and girls. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And don't forget, parents, we do have um, downloadable worksheets that correspond with everything that we learned today for you on our website and on our Facebook page. We can't wait to continue learning about God and how amazing God is and how he cares about our hearts and what is even in our hearts. And we can't wait to see you again next week.